Gamers, today we are going to do another episode of Get Good with Cutie Patootie. And today we're going to be talking about map control and boar importance. Uh, this is the map or game I played against Vortex yesterday. Uh, spoilers, I lost. And it's a French versus Abbasid, which I think is uh, it's French favored in feudal. But if the game goes past feudal, it's very Abbasid favored, very very Abbasid favored. I think the win rate like completely flops. It's kind of like let's say French has a seventy percent win rate in feudal, and then if you reach castle, it's like Abbasid has seventy five percent win rate. So the matchup for Abbasid is all about surviving. The matchup for French is killing the Abbasid in, in feudal or doing enough damage that you can go castle and then kill Abbasid. So. Uh, we're gonna talk about, like I said, the map control and why Vortex won here and why I didn't manage to defend. So I'll point out what he did good and what I did bad kind of thing so you can hopefully, uh, you know, learn how to play French uh, or how to defend against um, French. So I'm gonna skip this part because it doesn't matter. If you're looking for build order guides, French, English and Mongol are out and Abbasid will uh, one day as well. One of the really important things that a lot of people are missing is the reason why players are fighting in feudal. The main reason why players are fighting in feudal, not for the sake of fighting, but if you fight in feudal, you take the map control. If you take the map control, then you have food sources. If you take the food sources and deny your opponent from food sources, that means that you don't have to go farms as early. The earlier you have to go farms, the worse it is for you because the opponent is making units in production buildings while you're making farms, right? So think about it this way. Why would you make farms and slow your economy of production when you can just go and berries or deer or boar or whatever else or sheep, right? Obviously the exceptions are English and HRE because HRE can make some farms on their chapel, which is very nice. But in general, in a perfect world, you want to vacuum all the resources on the map and then go farms. That's like in the perfect scenario. Like, obviously sometimes you can, like you'll see in this game. But that should be your goal, always. Except, well, especially except with English, because they can go early farms. Um, so I'll skip this part. There's some harassment here on the stone. And one very important thing, as French, is to get good TC so that you can take as much map control with it as possible. A lot of people think that forward TC is very risky. And while obviously there's a higher risk of losing it, uh, putting a forward TC also has a great advantage as it's like a big tower, right? So if opponent ever pushes you, you can go to your TC and then you have a tower with, um, you know, with 10 villagers inside and do a lot of damage. So uh, he made a mistake of actually making this TC close to boar. And I made a mistake of not moving my Spearman earlier here, because this was kind of an obvious spot for TC. This deer pack is too far away. And this deer pack is like the most insane you can have. It has deer, it has gold, and it has boar like right here. So what I should have done is instantly moved Spearman. And I pulled the boar here, which you'll see. So I should have brought everything, my second scout, whatever else. And you can see boar doing damage, then I re-pull it. But I should have gone this way, but instead I go all the way around and the knight actually claps me here and he moves it away. So if I managed to get any kind of cancel here, it would have been really, really fucking bad for him. Or even if I killed a villager with the boar, it would have been really bad. You can see me moving the spears now, but it's, it's too late. On the other side, I get a similar TC, except it's covering my main gold, not, you know, open gold on the map. And... You know, I get the deer here and I get the TC to protect my own gold. Technically, I could have gone with forward TC uh, here as well. But I decided to go with this one. And it might prove to be a mistake in the end. And, and you'll see why. Uh, technically, this is a better location. But in this game, it would have actually been better if I put it here. So, the game continues. I went triple TC and he went uh, double TC. So I went and made my second TC over here. Uh, which now I feel like even uh, even in this situation, I should have made my 
my first TC here, my second I should have made here. So if he attacks this area with rams, I have two TCs, which is up to 20 villagers inside that can, like, you know, blast rapid fire the, uh, the enemies, right? But I went for this one here to secure the big deer and kind of semi-protect these berries in the back. Soon I'll go for a wall off. He keeps harassing um, everywhere he can. I'm defending. And actually, at this point, I felt really good. Um, this is the point where I was like, okay, this is clean. Worker count is 44 to 50 because his second TC was earlier and he's producing faster. But in a moment, I'll catch up and I'll overtake his uh, worker count. I think I lost one villager until this point so far, maybe two, which is not the worst thing. So soon I'll have a look at his army. Uh, and I'm walling off this. I got a wall off. I protected it with spearmen, so this was really good. Uh, so here I'll get a look at his army, and I was like, oh, this is really, really good for me. Like, really, really good for me. Because if you look, this is his army, right? Six knights and six archers. This is my army. I have five horsemen and 19 spears. So, and I'm producing out of triple stables. I'm getting plus one ranged armor. Like, I thought I'm in a clean position here. Like, very good. I was like, very, very comfortable right now. And... As I was losing, I was very confused, and I learned something new from this game. So he's making a ram, and as you can see, like, this army, you, you don't gotta be a top level player to see that this army does not beat this army. Like, I can walk over his army completely. So he goes for a push, and I think he realizes how many units I have. Maybe I could have waited a bit longer, let him commit more, and then crunch him. But I kind of showed him my army too fast, and he manages to retreat super, super fast. So I was still like, okay, I'm chilling. But because he saw that many horsemen, he went for the double barracks. So that's already two mistakes that I made. Attacking too soon there, and not making another TC here. So I go for the raids. And I saw that he has Spearman here, by the way, with this cap. So I knew at this point he has Spearman, and I knew he's about to push in here. So this is where the game goes very wrong for me. Uh, it was a bit unfortunate for me that he has a TC under Deer and a Boar, because this is basically immune to harassing. Like, if he makes a tower, like, somewhere on the map, like here, I can just destroy the tower kill the villagers. I can't really kill a TC, so it's very hard to harass any of this, right? So I didn't even bother going there, because I knew that it's going to be impossible to do damage, plus his reinforcements is coming from here. So I just kind of gave up on it. So I figured i go for this deer pack. This deer pack was between trees at the edge of the map, so he quickly walled both sides, which made it, made it hard for me to harass. So the only place I could have harassed these berries and woodline, which I didn't harass woodline, which was a big mistake as well. Because of the amount of archers and spearmen he, he was producing, I could have denied the wood and then he wouldn't have resources for those or resources for rams. So what I do here is I try to go here, he makes a quick wall, and then I try to destroy the wall, I waste too much time there, and in the end it wasn't a big deal, we'll see what happened. Meanwhile, he's pushing the forward side. <clears throat> so he splits up four knights to chase these horsemen and actually kill the four knights with the horsemen because I just said such a big amount. Which wasn't too bad for me. <clears throat> I didn't necessarily want to trade horsemen for knights, but, you know, he did lose a lot of knights, right? So still, in this game, I felt pretty good because I felt like I had so many units, like... I didn't think I was in danger of dying. Um, I had a lot of horsemen on his side of the map harassing. So I thought I'm in a decent position. And I thought, okay, he's not getting food here, so he's running out of food soon. But it just never came to be, and I died before he ran out of food. And like I said, I was very confused to how I lost, because this is the only food source that I have <clears throat> right now. These deer are basically gone. I didn't touch this, and these berries are about to be gone. So, from my point of view, he still had deer, he still had berries, and berries here. Meanwhile, I'm already transitioning to farms, so my unit production slows down a lot. Gaudi has a good spawn, yeah. Um, 
Because also here he can save on towers. If he makes two towers here, he protects both berries. You know. I mean, that's the thing. Like, sometimes spawns are really fucking good. Like, it is what it is. So... What I should have done... So I fought with horsemen here, which I thought was a big mistake. And I kept producing horsemen as my main army to fight his army. But he always had spears and knights. So he had two units that counter my horsemen. So what I should have done is I should have gone pure spear archer with one or two camels to debuff the cavalry. Because then my archers counter two of his units, which are archers and spearmen. And my spearmen counter knights and do even with spears. So that way, I'm getting the better trade if you assume the same amount of resources put in. But I kept making horsemen because I thought I'll be able to beat the army with just masses because I didn't expect he would have that many units. And I ended up, you know, losing the game because of it. Um, so my horsemen just kept dying and obviously horsemen are 100 food and I could have made one spearman one archer for that food and actually have 10 food uh, left. So I kept swapping gear in and out. I got some spearmen out that he thought they were villagers, I think. And this is the moment where I was like, okay, nice. I defend. Like, that's it. He's dead. But again, he had such a massive fucking income, he was actually able to outproduce me. Like, look, all of a sudden he has a massive army again. And this is the issue. He's 12 spearmen, 20 archers, and my army is 13 horsemen, 10 archers. So I had no... I ha I countered myself, basically. Um, in this game. So right now, what I should have done, in retrospect, I could have even given up this TC, because I'm 96 workers against 82. The horsemen, by the way, returned and killed some villagers, not too many. But I should have even given up this TC, went and raided with these 17 horsemen, like, just caused chaos in here. Because this is obviously, it's 20 workers, 24 workers, so he can't carry some all of them. And I should have just defended with pure spear archer. Because again, there's a moment in French aggression where they just kind of slow down because they have to go farms. And because I was going farms, in my mind, he's about to run out of food. So I kept thinking, if I keep producing cavalry, he runs out of food, then I can counterattack. You can't really counterattack as effective with spearman archer, right? And that moment never came and I just died. So here we go, and this engagement we'll see when it goes really fucking bad for me. Like, the army sizes are somewhat similar. I have less, but I'm fighting under a TC that shoots. And I go for the villagers to kill the, the things. And look, the surround, I try to surround the archers. You have spearmen here, knights here. And I completely, like, just get completely fucked in this attack. It might seem like we're evenly trading, but... Um, we're not. Because I'm making the wrong units for this. So, I keep trying to repair, yada yada. It ain't gonna work, Chief. I keep reinforcing and eventually I lose. So I'm gonna pause here before the game ends. So what happened here? He still has berries, by the way. What happened here? The berries food amount is... 1.5k here, right? On these berries that I did not get. So it's 1.5k. If I put a mill as Abbasid, I will get another 600, which is 2.1k. So the reason why he still has berries is, and he's not out of it is the boar. The boar has 2,000 food. We both got both of our deers. I mean, okay, I have like 200 food here, which is irrelevant. He had that 2,000 food bonus compared to me because, uh, you know, any sieve other than Abbasid and Nelly can get bore. And I didn't get my 2.1k food, which is a 4.1k food difference between us. And this is why I had to go farms this early and he didn't. Now, when I looked at the replay after I lost, I looked at the replay because I was confused how he had more units than me. Because Abbasid should, is supposed to um, have more units, right? or managed to overwhelm. I looked and I saw that he only had four farms, right? And just before the game ends, his berries start running out, his boar ran out, all his deer ran out, and he's pushing, putting, pushing, 
He's putting massive, massive amounts of workers of wood. He has 38. And the reason for that is he's putting 38 of wood is because he needs to go farmers very soon. Like he, cause he, this is about to run out. Like a lot of these are very empty, the four wood ones. So he's about to run out. He could have also gone for this boar, which would have prolonged his economy by quite a lot longer. But this is the moment where his food income is about to tank, right? Uh, th this food income still counts for the deer that he had here. So his food income is about to tank and his unit production is about to slow down. And technically mine would remain the same or go higher because of the farms I have. And this is why you don't want to go farms too early. Because the farms tanked my food income so hard that in a matchup where you're supposed to have more units, the opponent had more units. Not to mention his villagers cost more food, right? Because I'm Abyssin. And the only difference between the food incomes is the 4.1k food that kind of won him the battle, right? So, this is all achieved to map control. He pushed this side. Why did he push this side? Because there's a TC, there's a gold, there's deer, and there's beers. So he's denying three resources at the same side. It would make zero sense if he pushed here. And I see this a lot in lower leagues. They push like at, at random spots and they go for like main TC, which is no point. He didn't push here because he knew the deer would be already done by the time he arrives here. So he pushes at the only place where there was food to deny. Technically, he could have also taken this food and delayed his uh, 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 farms by another one and a half thousand. And he could have gotten the boar, which is another two thousand. And this is why map control in Age of Bars 4 is so extremely important. Because it allows you to basically overwhelm your opponent and he could have like i like i said he could have taken my food um and from here on out let's say i did survive right let's say that, that some miracle i did survive he still has the map control he could have made a keep here and i'm completely locked in my base meanwhile he has everything else around it and it all comes from feudal fighting and having feudal aggression and having uh, the boar whenever you can so especially if you're playing like I'm not saying English should go out on the map and take the boar obviously Delian and Abbas it can't because of their sieves I'm not saying that HRE if you rush castle you should go for the boar but whenever you can get boar and this is why Rus is so powerful as well same as French because they get boar early and they force you to stay in your base they remove you from food sources and there comes a point I don't know if you guys ever notice when you watch tournaments, right? Everything is fine, everything is fine. They're trading, and then the guy that's not Rooster Friends just die. Like, they just they just don't have units. And most of the time, the reason for that is they run out of food. And they cannot afford going to farm transition. So, this is why sieves that can get boar should 100% get the boar. And again, the, the sieves that can do it very frequently and very easily are French, um, Rus, HRE potentially if you're playing against uh, more passive sieves. And recently we've seen Mongol players also going for the boar just because it gives you so much income. And we've also seen Mongol players not go for as many pastures as before, but instead go for you know deer on the map or bears on the map because people realize that Technically, if you get farms early with any sieve or pastures, it is safer food, but it is less food at that point. Which will give you less income, it's going to give you less effective resources, less units, and less map control. So like I said, even if I didn't die here, he could get stone, right? Super easily. I mean, he has insane amounts of workers. He has 84 workers. He can put 20 workers in stone, put a keep. And what that does, it forces me to go trebuchets, right? While he's still making fighting units and mangonels, I'm going trebuchets to destroy keep. And all that comes down to, like I said, map control, the importance of boar, which is why when Rus players go for that early boar strategy, you see a lot of players and a lot of civs try to deny it because it's very, very powerful. And if you can deny it, you should. Like I said, in this map, 
I made some, you know, wrong decisions. Also, the boar spawned very close to the deer packs. So it made it very hard for me to deny because of the TC that was right there. But whenever you can, those are the things that you can focus. And, and hopefully this gave you a little insight in how the French players are playing and how um, people should think about the game and why there's so much feudal aggression. The reason why I wanted to make a video out of this game, I thought that Vortex played it really well because I usually overwhelm the French players, even in Feudal, where French has an advantage. When I play Abbasid, I'm usually able to defend and just overwhelm French completely and win the game from then on. But just the amount of units that he had, I couldn't. And um, it's because, like I said, he had a sick food income. So technically, if, if I went for earlier farms, maybe I could have held. If I didn't make as many horsemen and went into spear archers, I could have won uh, and raided with horsemen a little bit better because they only did that one big raid and I kind of traded out a horseman for knights, which usually is okay, but I don't think it was okay in this specific game. I should have worked on denying wood or some kind of resources. This was a very good game for me to learn and I learned a lot from it. Even though all these things I technically know, like that I want to get all the food and deny food and yada yada, but it's good to have a, a, a good example to show on why you lost and what happened and what I did bad and what the opponent did good. So I hope you guys learned something as well. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you're watching on Twitch, let's play some ladder games.